This is pre-calc section 12.1 sequences. This video is just an overview of some terms and definitions for sequences. Basically, a sequence is just an ordered list of numbers. Something like 2468 is an ordered list of numbers. Now, the formal definition says a function whose domain is a set of positive integers. I'll get back to that in a second. But two definitions here. If the sequence ends, it is called finite. So this is a finite sequence because it stopped at 8. If the sequence has got dot, dot, dot on the end, this is infinite because that means it continues forever and ever. Now, let's go to this page. I'll come back to something on here. The idea on a sequence, it is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. Well, let's talk about old function notation. I'm just making up a new function, f of n equals 2n plus 1. How did I get these numbers, 3, 5, 7? I have gotten them by doing f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, meaning if I plug 1 in right here, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Plug 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, etc. This will generate a sequence if I chose to write it this way. This is the sequence 3, 5, 7. That is an ordered list of numbers that came from this function. Now that's old function notation. Now we have to convert to sequence notation. Instead of f of n, we are doing a sub n, and we are going to find the entries a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3 by putting 1 in for n and doing that arithmetic. Well, it's the same arithmetic. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. a sub 2 means plug 2 in for that n. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and plug 3 in there. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and I get this sequence of 3, 5, 7. Now, we never really wrote the function notation in sequence order. I just wanted you to see that sequences really are generated by thinking of them like functions. Now, go back to the definition. This definition said a sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. What does that mean? That means, where did I get the numbers 3, 5, 7? I got 3 by plugging 1 in positive integer, plug 2 in, plug 3 in, and so on. So I could think of these as ordered pairs, meaning I plugged 1 in and I got 3. I plugged 2 in and I got 5. I plugged 3 in and I got 7. There's our domain, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 5, 7 would be our range, if you want to use that terminology also. So the elements of the range, I just used that word a second ago, are called the terms of a sequence. So let's take this 3, 6, 9, 12. This 3, 6, 9, 12, if I want to think of it as an ordered pair, I plugged 1 in and got 3. I plugged 2 in and got 6. Plugged 3 in and I got 9. Plugged 4 in and got 12, etc. Dot, dot, dot. That was infinite. But the idea is 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are my positive integers that I use to plug in to generate those numbers, which are elements of the range and the 3, 6, 9, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12 are called terms of a sequence. A lot of the stuff we do with sequences is pretty easy. It's just the notation can look kind of funny to you and that's why I'm going over this with you right here. So what we did on any of these is we found the first term by letting n equal 1, we let, let the second term be found by let n equals 2, and the general term or the nth term is this a sub n. You will be asked to write the first five terms of different sequences where you are given a certain formula. So a sub n is this formula. And if I want to find the first five terms, that means I'm going to be looking for a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. And if I'm going to find a sub 1, I need to plug 1 in for that n and that n, which this would be negative 1 to the first times 1 squared. And you can plug that in your calculator to do that arithmetic if you want to. Negative 1 to the 1, of course, is negative 1. 1 squared is 1, which gives me an entry of negative 1. If I want to do a sub 2, I'm going to plug 2 in for that n and that n. So this is negative 1 squared times 2 squared. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. 2 squared is 4, 1 times 4 is 4. So it's just arithmetic. This is just like asking you to evaluate f of n, where 
it is this formula, negative 1 to the n, n squared. a sub 3 means I'm going to put a 3 in there. This is getting pretty crowded here. Let's erase that. a sub 3 means put a 3 here and put a 3 there. So this is negative 1 cubed times 3 squared. Negative 1 cubed is a negative 1. 3 squared is 9. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. And you can do this arithmetic on your own. Plug 4 in, plug 5 in, and this comes out to be a positive 16. This comes out to be a negative 25. Another example, just a different formula here. Same deal. I need to find a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, and you will find whatever number of terms Math, Labs tell, Math Lab tells you to. So a sub 1 means a 1's going here and here, so that's 1 over 1 plus 3 is 4. a sub 2 means plug a 2 in here and here, which gives me 2 over 2 plus 3 is 5, and you can do the rest of the arithmetic on this. You can check this out. This should be a half, this should be 4 sevenths, and this should be 5 eighths. Now, this is going backwards. You are given the entries, you are given the terms of the sequence, and you are asked to, what it says, write down the nth term. What that means is write the formula for the nth term. The formula for the nth term on this one was that formula right there. The formula for the nth term was that formula right there. So what we did on this page is we were given the formula and we generated the terms of the sequence by plugging in 1, plug in 2, plug in 3, etc. Now we're working our way backwards. We know what the terms are and we want to try to figure out what the pattern is, try to write the nth term. So this would be a sub n with these squigglies here. And then you want to look at this from the term from the standpoint of this is the first term, meaning you plugged one into some formula. If you plugged one into some formula that gave us a fraction, that means our formula must be a fraction. And if we plugged a one in and it stayed one, that means that has to be n. If we plugged a one in and it became a two, what did you do to one to make it become a two? Well, you could think I doubled it, but that doesn't work right here. So what I did here is I added 1. So this is n over n plus 1. And before you leave that, you want to double check that it works to get this term, this term, this term. So this is found by plugging 2 into some formula. Let's plug it in over here. Put a 2 here, gives me 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Yep, that works. Plug 3 in. 3 are here. 3 plus 1 is 4, and it also works for the 5. So that's what you need to do when you are trying to come up with the formula. And then once you know that formula, that would generate any term. Let's say you want to find a sub 10. I would plug 10 in for n. 10 in for n. 10 plus 1 is 11, which gives me 10 over 11. That's the benefit of knowing what the formula is. It will allow you to find any particular term without having to count your way all the way out. Now something you may be or you should be familiar with is what's known as the factorial symbol. Factorial is this exclam exclamation point and n factorial, that's what you call this, don't say n exclamation point, it's n factorial, is found by multiplying whatever the n is by the number just lower than that, by the next number lower than that, and so on. So n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, et cetera, all the way down to 1. So if I want to look at this example, evaluate 7 factorial, that means 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and that is 7 factorial. Now you could do that by hand. You could also just type it in your calculator, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 th times 3 times 2 times 1. If your graphing calculator do this, you will type in 7, go to math, go across to PRB, and the fourth thing down is the factorial. So you could just type in 7, math, use your arrows to get over to PRB, and then type in a 4, which brings up the fourth entry, which is a factorial. And it'll say 7 factorial on your screen. 7 factorial is 5,040. So you could do this on your own and then see what my answer is. 5 factorial, I could write it all out, or be easier to use a calculator, which would be 5 math PRB. You can either type in 4, which takes you to the fourth entry, or you can use your down arrow till you land on that fourth line, and that should be 120. 
Same thing here, even though it's a fraction, I can do 18 math, I'll just put M for math, PRB, the fourth thing down, divided by 15 math, PRB, fourth thing down, and that works out to be 4,896. Two things to say before I leave this page is that zero factorial, type it in your calculator if you want to, is defined to be one. It makes no sense as far as what this definition says, but zero factorial is one. That's important. Also, one factorial is one because according to this definition, when you start doing the factorial, you go all the way down until you reach one. That's where you stop. So to do one factorial, we stop by just doing one. So both zero factorial and one factorial are one. So we had to look at the factorial because there's a couple examples in this section that deal with factorial, and there's some things we get to at the end of this chapter that deal with the factorial. A recursively defined sequence is a sequence that is generated by what I call building on itself, meaning you start with the first term, you do something to it to get the second term. Then you do the same thing to that number to get the third term and so on. So start with 6 and then add 3. Well, 6 plus 3 is 9. Add 3 again gives me 12. Add 3 again gives me 15. That is a recursively defined sequence because we started with some value and we kept doing the same bit of arithmetic each time to get the next term. So in math notation what we did is written this way. We, are starting, we start with a first term, a sub 1 equals 6. It says this is valid for n greater than 1 because that's how we count. We can't go back to negative, so we start with the first term, the second term, etc. And here is this formula that says to get each subsequent a sub n term, we take the previous term. a sub n minus 1 is the previous term, and we add 3. So what does a sub n minus 1 mean? It means the previous term because these are generated by starting with a particular term and doing the same bit of arithmetic each time to the previous term. This is the second term. The previous term is a sub 1. So a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, etc. So if we're at a sub 2, the previous term is a sub 1. If we're at a sub 3, the previous term is a sub 2. So look at this sequence. We go, we go a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, etc., all the way up to a sub n minus 1 to a sub n. So anywhere you are in this sequence, then the previous term can be called a sub n minus 1 as it compares to a sub n. Now, what is the term after a sub n? has to be a sub n plus 1. Because if you look at a sub n minus 1, followed by a sub n, followed by a sub n plus 1, you can see that what separates all of these terms is one position. a sub n minus 1, add 1 right here, gives us a sub n. Add 1 to that n, gives us a sub n plus 1. Now go back to this definition. A recursive formula designates the starting term a sub 1, right there, and the nth term of the sequence, that's going to be some sort of formula, as an expression containing the previous term. That's why this is written a sub n, and this is written as a sub n minus 1. This formula to find a sub n contains the previous term, which is designated a sub n minus 1. So you're going to be asked to find the first four terms for this recursively defined sequence. Here's our a sub 1, that's what we started with, and here is our formula for a sub n, which uses the previous term, which is a sub n minus 1. Well, obviously, to find a sub 1, you just got to look at your givens. a sub 1 is 4. To find a sub 2, I will plug 2 in for that n, and I will plug 2 in for that n, which means to find a sub 2, it is 2 times a sub 1, which is the previous term, plus 1, which is 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 9. To find a sub 3, I'm following this pattern, which is to double the previous term. The previous term is 9 plus 1. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19. To find a sub 4, my formula is double the previous term, which is 19 plus 1, which gives me 39. 
So I find it easier in my head when I start looking at this to say this is just two times the previous term plus one rather than having to put a two here and then a two here then come back and put a three here and then a three here. So if you can just in your head think about that a sub n minus 1 means the previous term. This is going to be easier for you to do. We're still finding the first four terms. Here is a formula that is a little more complicated, but write out what it means. A sub n minus 1 says take the previous term, whatever it is, add n, whenever it happens to be, minus 1. So a sub 1 is just 2. A sub 2 is found by doing the previous term, which is 2, and add to that n. What is n? n is that number right there. And then subtract 1 because that's what the formula says to do. 2 plus 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. To find A sub 3, go to the previous term, which happens to be 3, and add n, which happens to be that number right there, and subtract 1 gives me 5. A sub 4, go to my previous term, which is 5, add n, which is that number right there, take away 1 is 8. So my sequence is 2, 3, 5, 8.